Well, good morning and welcome everyone to another beautiful, cool day here at Juma. And we are so happy to be beginning our sunset safari, oh, sunset, sunrise safari with you all. And my name is Amy and behind the camera today with me is Panda. There's his thumb. And I'm excited. I haven't worked with Panda since last year. So I'm excited to be back on the vehicle together with him. We've got two days together. So it's going to be great. And we were starting off the show today with showing you a beautiful piece of grass in fluorescence with some raindrops that have been caught. Now it's not currently raining, fingers crossed. Um, but we did have quite a shower through the night and it's quite cloudy and overcast. Panda's got his big jacket on and I've got my fleece and my raincoat on just in case we don't know what will come this morning. But um, how beautiful are those raindrops caught in the grass? And it's the thing we notice the most when we're driving here in the morning is how the raindrops are caught in the pieces of grass, sometimes even spider webs. It really is beautiful. Now, the plan for today for me is to head down towards the sort of in the western, southwestern side of the reserve and see what uh, we can find. Now remember that this is a live and interactive show. So please make sure that you send through your comments and your questions. We would love to hear from you, both myself and Cedric. And yeah, let us know what you're thinking, what you're hoping to see today. Um, you can do that via the Wild Earth website or the app or chat to us in the YouTube chat stream. Otherwise, you can join the conversation on X using the hashtag Wild Earth. Now, as you can see, the skies are grey this morning. <laughs> Anna Marie, yes, indeed, we cannot wait to see what Katadei has in store. And that is exactly what Cedric and I are hoping to find this morning. I'm driving down um, the sort of main highway road that we know for some of the leopards. Well, I'm going to be driving down it and see if there's any tracks over the rain because then we know that they are really, really fresh. Um, I'm sure Cedric will give you an update as well about a certain cat that was seen. And um, we are hoping to find her tracks this morning and get an idea and maybe even um, find a leopard ourselves. So I'm looking forward to the day. It's exciting, very different from yesterday morning but still lovely and it's a good day for cats if there ever was one. All right, head down to set. All right, we've got a leopard here. I don't know where it is, we've got a leopard here. It's just gone down. Um, sorry, I just want quickly. Who is this, who is this? I'll get my binox out. Looks like Langa. It's coming back now. Yeah, it looks like Langa. Langa, hello my girl. Is it? Is it Langa? Yes, what a start. Well, my name is Cedric and behind the camera with me on Rusty, we've got Muscles and Paul. Oh, this is brilliant. What a start to this morning sun, sunrise safari. It looks like Langa to me. Uh, very light around the eye area. So beautiful leopardess. This is marvellous. Now it's a... Uh, Longer. That's nice. Yeah, I've just got Langa here on uh, Shibamu Junction, going main heading north into Juma. Victor, what a wild start! Yeah, yeah, I am so happy. Let's follow. <coughs> Miss Sunshine, Miss Sunshine. And what Langa means, sunshine. And there's also male leopard tracks going up here as well, so. Yeah, let's get up here. 
Let me see where she's gone now. Eh? She was gone here. Do 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 do. She will come out here on the fire break. So, oh, there she is. Oh, beautiful. It's nice. That's one thing. Coming out early in the morning like this, this is exactly why we do early morning safaris. Get the nocturnal cats like leopards and lions still moving around doing their thing. And our Lunga is coming up into Juma on Shabama Road, Gauri Main Junction. And she's heading straight to one of these pans here. All right. Lovely. And we're actually looking for Tlalama because they saw Tlalama, the other leopardess, last night again. Yeah, Molawati drainage line. And oh, she's turned now. Dark Mane Lover, yes, another great find. What a, yeah, a great, great find for the morning. Beautiful. And she's still a young, young female. Um, I think she's coming on to four years old very soon, but she doesn't look too relaxed at the moment, but she looks like she's just turned now, heading south. Heading south this side. So I'm just gonna have to let the other guys know what's cutting here. Yeah? Uh, sorry, Clayton, I've got Langa here. Shabamu Junction, Gary Main, uh, but just on the fire break heading east. All right. Let's go. So, I've also got male leopard tracks here, as I said, so I wonder if... You know, see how she's scraping her back legs now? She's just pretty much marking her territory. Just marking her area. And this is where her and uh, pretty much uh, Tlalamba, the territories overlap in this area, like in this section. So this is Lunga's furthest northern part of her territory, and then, yeah, you'll find Tlalamba goes a little bit further south. All right, let's try and get around. Oh. Let's follow, let's follow, let's follow. Let's follow. I don't know how we're going to follow here, but let's follow. That's all right. It's important myself, so we we will always... Oh, I can smell that popcorn smell. Always trying to get a, the great sightings here. All right, let's see if we can get around. All right, let's get around here. I just want to try and keep my eyes on here, Jordan. You can stick with us, stick with us. But I just want to try and get a, a nice a view. Let's see, she's coming. Hopefully she didn't turn, eh, Paul? <laughs> Just double check. Should be, yeah. Uh... All right, maybe not, eh? Uh -oh. I think she might have... <laughs> uh, I just want to make sure she's not going across. Oh, there she oh she's coming out. Sorry, girl. There she comes. Oh, there she comes. Yeah, she comes. Well, I do apologize. I did not have a monitor this morning. So I will be chatting to Mpo to see where we are framed up on. Yeah, so just yeah, come to the quarry. Awesome. And you can see how she is really scent marking. And look at those eyes. Oh, she's so beautiful, eh, my girl? She's heading straight south again. Looks like we might lose her the yeah, but let's quickly let's quickly see if here before we lose her, yeah. 
but as I think what she's going to do, she might have hit herself. Yeah. Sorry, my okay, copy. Cedric does have Zanga. I'm not going to be away at the quarry, just east of Shimabu. And there is Kuchava. I'm going to take scent mark, leave a scent, rub a neck there, lift the uh, tail, and spray that lovely scent over that bush. Yeah, to on Gary Main now again at that uh, quarry. She's still heading in an easterly direction along the road. Kelly, uh, she's a, she's a big female, biggish, not f fully grown. She's still only coming out to four years old now. Just remember, when is she turning four? I think in June. So June she'll be turning four, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. So she's still got growing. She's not completely f fully grown yet. And her mom is uh, the beautiful Sibui. Uh, that's her mother. And then her brother is a lovely ma a male known as Ashasha. But he's gone far away from this area. He's moved far away from here. All right, just gonna try and get around here. He, Cause he's looking for a territory of his own and he went straight into like the southeastern corners of, uh, of Kruger National Park. Which the females will usually kind of share a little part of their mom's territory. Turn, yep. Oh, don't go in there. No, she goes in there now. Hey. I think because as soon as the second vehicle came here now, it looks like she's not too relaxed. All right, so it looks like we're gonna lose her now. Yeah, she's gonna disappear. All right, all right, that was it, that's about it. All right, well, let's go, to go try and follow up on that male leopard quickly. And, uh, let's go. Maybe we'll get another leopard. Unfortunately, we cannot drive into this property, into Little Gowry. Uh, oh, you see her? She's coming back. Oh, oh sorry, I didn't see that. Oh, it's simple, well done. Come back this way. Not there she goes. Wrong way. All right, we'll let the other vehicles try and follow there. You know, the guys that can traverse, enjoy, mate. exciting everyone some cats for cat today but we are driving along the road and bumped into this young male bull elephant and he is so beautiful uh, panda had a gorgeous close-up there of his face and you could really see the details there some of the um, moisture from the vegetation that he's been walking through and he's having a little bit of a rest just have a look at the tip of that trunk 
It's bent over there on the ground. And often elephants uh, will do that when they are actually resting. Even though he's not completely um, motionless, his ears are moving slightly, his eyes are still a little bit open. But look how sleepy he looks. I know, my boy, it's very early. <laughs> Riley, indeed, he is such a lovely, relaxed elephant. In fact, so relaxed that I think he's half asleep. Oh. Not so asleep anymore, clearly. I can also hear in the back right side of where we are now, there are some hyenas calling. Elka indeed, absolutely. They are big mammals that they don't have, they can't cool down the way we can with sweat glands and that sort of thing. So they get very, very warm. And that's why we often see in the heat of the day that, um, Elephants love to cool down at a waterhole, but um, in weather like this, it's a, it's a there's a constant waterhole falling from the sky, <laughs> so they all body gets cooled down, and so they don't have to go splash themselves when they're getting moisture from the environment like this. Now I think he was sleeping, and then obviously you know sometimes when you hear something and you get a bit of a fright and then you turn around you're like oh what's that what's that and now he's back to resting again just have a look at his trunk there um, back flat down on the ground and you can see those nostrils look at that what a start this morning hey panda it's been great lung of the leopard and now we've got an elephant as well. Mm. Barbara, you want to know how much I think this boy weighs? It's a good question, but tricky to say accurately, I must be honest, but he is not fully grown. He's actually still quite small. He's probably the size of a, of a, of a average female, I would say at this point. Um, so I would say maybe two and a half, between two, oh, it's so tricky, maybe between one and a half and two and a half tons, I would say. He's big, um, but he's not a six ton elephant bull by any, by any means. I may be completely off Barbara, it's so tricky to give an accurate estimate because uh, first of all where are we going to find a scale to put this elephant on panda do you have one no, 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 no. <laughs> he says no he doesn't have one uh, but that's sort of my estimate i would say you know if they're growing to six tons and he's maybe still in his late teen years i would say um he's old enough to have left the herd clearly i don't hear any sounds of any other elephants we don't see anything um so he's he's old enough to to have moved on from his natal herd but he's not yet big enough to be mating with females um so that's why if i think of sort of how much weight they'll be still yet to gain that that is sort of where i would estimate his weight lies at the moment Jamuna, you want to know why is he by himself? So it's um, something that happens with male elephants. It's part of what we call their life story and the way that their sort of social structure works. 
is that male elephants are kicked out of the herd when they reach their teenage years and that has to do with many different factors but overall it's nature's way of ensuring that um, the gen genetic pool is varied and so this boy's genes he won't stick with his um, mother and, and cousins and aunties and things like that he'll have to move off to a completely new area um, where he can then one day in many years time actually be able to mate successfully with females and and pass on his genes so that is why we often actually i think only ever seen when i've seen an, an elephant completely on its own it has been a male um if you see a female completely on her own no one's around she'll probably be quite distressed because they are um herd animals and and they're so closely knit in their family groups but for the males it's a different story and uh, this is part of his life he'll be a bachelor now uh, for the rest of his life and uh, maybe in about 15 to 20 years time he'll be about double the size and uh, then he can maybe challenge a dominant bull in the area for mating rights with females so he's got a long journey ahead of him this elephant and he's learning what it is like to be a bull Oh, Judy, I can't imagine it. It would be very hard to stand on my feet for 20, 24 hours a day, every day. But I do think it is different when you have four legs instead of two. Um, and also, elephants have feet that are quite squishy in that they've got these fatty pads. All right, looks like Lunga has come back out onto Agari Main. So she has come back onto this main road here on the southern side of Juma. She went into Juma again, she went to the fire break and then she's like, nope, let me just come back south, come back onto this uh, road. She's just slinking away, she's not too happy. You can see the ears pulled back like that, almost like that low uh, posture, body posture. Here's yeah, something. What do you hear, my girl? Hmm? What is happening? And of course, uh, had the lumber around in this area. Uh, the other gentleman, two nights ago, last night, and no longer is this side, so maybe she's just a little bit wary. Alright, around now. Let's 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 go around. Up, up and down. Ah. Puma, yes, she's very uh, great condition. Wonderful condition. Beautiful leopardess, eh? Beautiful girl. Beautiful. All right, we're gonna try and stop here and see if Paul can get maybe something out of this. Uh, 
swimming pool and see what I can do here for you. Oh, oh <laughs> no, don't go down that way. As he's sniffing there, come straight. We're going to have a vehicle in shot now, but she's just going to go past this vehicle. I'm coming, oh, she's going to go straight south again. So she's gone again. Yeah. Well, she might come out here and pull. I'm just going to wait here. Maybe Lunga comes out here again. I'm just going to give it a go. Yeah. The other vehicles are pulling up, turning their phones off. <laughs> so she's at this big marula tree that's in, in front of us. We're going to see if she's. No, Jordan, I think, uh, I don't think she's going to come back north. Well, last, that's what you said last time, and she did come back north, but uh, we're just going to look. It's going to be us. I know, they just said it went straight. She went just straight south. Oh. So she's at this big marula apparently, so we'll just wait a bit. Well, so great that you got to see Langa again. That's wonderful news. And we have just watched this elephant go to the loo. There's some very fresh elephant dung. If you ever wondered what really fresh poop looks like, there it is. It's actually completely different to what we usually see or what maybe you are used to or what I showed yesterday was the marker. But when it just comes out the body, it's actually this very light yellowy color. We were waiting for this bull to let us past. Um, <laughs> I was asking him very nicely <laughs> to move out the road for us. <coughs> but fortunately he is walking down a little bit further. Um, and I think we might just have to go around him when we do want to move off. He's resting now, just with tucked his back leg away. And I think he's really just trying to chill out this morning. No, it is really, it's absolutely fascinating and it's so different, I suppose, from the way that we understand rest or sleep. And you can actually see he's not um, actively feeding either, so he's really just taking a chance to not do too much at all. You can just see that tail gently swishing from left to right, almost like a pendulum.
Olivia, you want to know if elephants ever use their tails as any type of communication? Yes, actually they really do. Um, when an elephant is upset or even um, worked up, maybe scared, uh, there's a few different options. But basically, if you see that tail come out at um, 90 degrees, to the body basically straight out from from the back and that usually happens when they are flustered i think would be the word or when they are quite seriously upset as well um, and often we see elephants even if they get spooked a little bit they'll run off and that tail will be straight out at the back um, which is yeah, rather interesting to see it is very long as well it's amazing that they are able to control it like that but that tail can communicate and it can tell us when an, an elephant is unhappy. Liverpool bird, I think it is. You are saying it must be confusing for the males when they get kicked out of the herd. Um, I suppose so to an extent. I, I'm not sure. I've never been able to 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 to. I suppose chat to a to a bull like this and and ask them. Um, I think it must be a little bit scary. Maybe I don't know exactly the 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 exact range of elephant emotion if if they sort of can compute that feeling of a little bit of anxiety or a little bit of unsureness of the future just because they um have been in their natal herd for so long um but i think there must be a little bit of trepidation you know when before they head off and and start you know the the, the life of a lone bachelor but I think also that the hormones are pushing them to do that. The testosterone levels are building, they're getting more rowdy um, and the females don't want to put up with that in their herds and and the, the, the it's time for the males to leave and, and it's almost a, a, a mutual thing that's understood. It's not like they desperately want to stay and they're being pushed off. Um, it's, it's something that happens over time and eventually they will um, completely you know no longer associate with that herd so i think at first it must be lonely absolutely i think when you've when you've grown up in a family like that and all of a sudden you're on your own it can be lonely um, but slowly but surely they do adjust and it becomes their normal way of life I've actually heard another elephant. This was a different... Oh, so he's not on his own. You see, there's, I think, another bull around here. I can't see it, but I can hear a few rumbles. There was a little bit of a slight trumpet there. can hear some bushes breaking now we might actually see another elephant come out here at some point maybe into the road Molly, you asking if an, if the elephant can return to its original herd? Um, as a male, look, 
there's every possibility that they'll bump into each other or see each other at waterholes and things like that. But in terms of rejoining as a, a mature male elephant, no. That's not something that the bulls would do. Not to say that will never happen, you know, with elephants, oh my word, or well, animals in general, you can never say, well, they'll never do that. And then next thing they're doing it. But it just, it wouldn't be something that we would usually observe at all. Um, once they've left, they've usually left for good. when you can hear an elephant but not see it I can hear <coughs> it pulling leaves off branches and I wonder if it's a much bigger bull than this one um, sometimes these sort of teenage bulls who have left the herd associate with a much more mature older bull uh, just to sort of learn the the way of life of a of a bull elephant so I'm not sure we're gonna try and see if we can see it. I can't even see any trees moving at this point, but I can definitely hear um, an elephant around the corner. Danny, it's a good question. Um, the range of sort of the, the area that they can communicate the distance does vary um, depending on a variety of different conditions. But I've heard that it can be even up to, um, they can hear sort of distant rum thunder rumbles and things like that about 10 kilometers or so. But I would say they could easily communicate within um, five kilometers or so of each other if not more than that, um, I'm talking on a regular basis where they, within that sort of um, or, or, or area around them, um, but it's very easy for them to communicate at a distance, but usually they're communicating, you know, within the group that they're in. So they don't have to um, let their communication travel too far. All right, we, I think, are going to try and get around these ellies and you are going to head over to Cedric. All right, thanks, uh, Amy. Um, <coughs> okay, so left Langa because she went into little Gauri, can't follow there. Um, I'm coming back here to Zoe's Philemon's cut line because we've had beautiful male leopard tracks coming up here. Nothing crossing onto Zoe's. So he's come up typical for tortoise pan because they had tortoise pan last night inside of uh, Hoffman's, another property that's just south of us and he was coming north. So he came onto Shibamu Road, he usually comes up there, cuts across and then he'll come into Zoe's. Nothing comes onto Zoe's. So got a feeling exactly where um, he caught the warthog with Mawati the other day, the other male leopard. Um, I think he's in this, in this block again. So we're going to just uh, see if we can find him. Let's find uh, that beautiful boy. He's here. He is here somewhere. I'm going to try Philemon's cut line quickly. Let's double check there. Oh, yes, because so that's right, it is cut, cut today, of course, and we're already at Langa. And apparently Chella is uh, there on uh, the service road on uh, Gary Main, close to the Molawati drainage line. So I think, uh, I think Amy is uh, trying to get to that sighting. 
So I'm crossing fingers that she can get there. Hopefully, chill it. And her and Chilla's tracks is. Uh, Alright, Kabi. And of course, uh, her tracks is coming directly from the north, from um, the more whitey drainage line and coming straight south to there. So, so her cubs are still inside uh, that uh, thicket there. Yeah, nothing coming out on uh, yeah, Zoe's. Uh, yeah, so nothing on Zoe's, nothing on, uh, nothing on Philemon's cut line. So yeah, it might be in that little block there. Oh yeah, do you think it turned? It turned like northwest, eh? Yeah. I... Yeah. I've just done Philemon's cut line. Yeah, I think it's going to make nothing. All right, yeah, I'm on Rebecca's here now, so I'll also just take Rebecca's and just take a look for the Mons cut line again. <laughs> we got, uh, we got uh, somebody in front of us here. It's here, yes. Amy, thank you, Amy, for. Hello, mommy. All right, just gonna turn off here. Hello, mommy. We didn't see you there. Yes. Sorry, from Paul. Is it. That one there, huh? All right. I want to try and reverse, but we're going to wait for this one, yeah. It's quite nice. A nice little herd. Hello. Good morning, good morning. How are you? I think these uh, elephants are all very happy. Hi, Amy, Amy. Uh, Jordan, can you just please ask, uh, uh, ask Amy just to put a, turn her game drive radio on? Thank you. Uh, just trying to get hold of Amy. Not the oldest of ones, it's just enjoying, looks like a, a young acacia tree. Yeah, sorry, I mean, we're just trying to get hold of you. Um, yeah, we're just trying to follow up on my daughter, Ingwen Konzo's around this side, here yeah, towards Philemon's cut line, Shibamu. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you're going to come, are you coming into the area to give us a hand? All right, copy. Got to get a little bit forward, yeah? Let's see if we can get this. So much happening this morning, eh, um, Paul? Yeah. So much happening. I mean, I'm trying to get to certain places, but uh, it's, it's nice just to at least stop here for some elephants and all that along the way. It is a complete 180. So I'm just going to uh, uh, yeah, no, Jordan, it is a complete. Uh, yesterday morning was very, very slow, very, very slow. Um, but yeah, no, this morning is everything's happening. But I want to see if we can get the opportunity to try and follow up on uh, Tortoise Pan, that beautiful male leopard. And try and get to the net area. And I also know that uh, Amy is going to try and get to a Chella. It's a, it's a lovely female a lion. Uh, 
All right. Uh, well, we're going to slowly head into the area where we last had tortoise, pan, tortoise pans tracks. So let's, let's head over to Amy for the time being. Thanks, Cedric. We are having all the luck with the Ellies today. We moved off, came around the corner, and we have found the tiniest little baby elephant. And I looked at Panda. I was like, we cannot not show this. So we're trying to make our way a little bit further down um, towards the southeastern side of uh, Juma to follow up on some reports of a lioness there. Um, but we are going to show you that cute little baby elephant first and then follow up on that lioness a little bit later. And there's a whole herd here, everyone. They're all around us on our left and right, and that little one is coming out again. But have a look at mom's trunk. That's actually interesting. It's a bit of difference in coloration. I'm just getting out my binoculars. looks as though, I don't know, is that dirt that's just making it look lighter on the inside of her trunk or maybe it is actually a little bit of a uh, change in, you see that there's like a lighter bit on the side of her trunk and near the bottom. There we go. I wonder if that's some sort of change that's happened with um, the melanin. Oh, Darcy Miller, that baby is so adorable. We may actually see them all come across the road. There's two that are walking now in front of us. Oh, there's the little one that's coming. Oh, sweet. Look, 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 there it goes, there it goes. Run, little one, run. That was so adorable, oh my goodness. The one thing that I love about um, family groups of Ellie's is that that little one is always so well protected. Oh, Liam, you are 10 years old. You want to know how old I think that little one is? I think that little one could be about three months or so between sort of uh, let's say two to five months old and it still is very very small there they're gonna maybe come through that gap on the left there panda we just have to see as they're moving but they did cross the road and they're heading off into the this thicket here on the left hand side there's a trunk I see coming past there. There we go. So we'll see if they come past and then we are going to carry on with our mission to head off and see if we can um, find a lioness. Pangolins galore, absolutely. I mean, who does? I don't know. I haven't met one person who gets tired of seeing baby elephants. They are just the cutest things, especially like that when we got to see them actually come across the road in this clearing. And they just run like that because their little steps are so tiny. They have to take like 10 to keep up with one step by mom. And we may see it pop out again. There we go. There we go. Oh, and the one's got its trunk on its back. That's so sweet. Very affectionate, our elephants.
slowly the whole herd is now coming past. Yes, Jackson, absolutely. It is a wonderful thing to be able to see that <clears throat> dynamic of the protection and, and family element of elephants. And I think that's why so many of us as people who love the bush and, and love nature connect with them, connect with elephants and enjoy them so much. You can just see those little tusks peeping out of this one. And um, that means that this elephant is about between three and five, I would say, years old. All right, everyone, we are also going to move on. These elephants are now heading off into the bush. And we are going to make our way further south into the reserve. But so lovely to be able to see that. And don't worry about the gentleman on our left. I think he is tracking this morning. Uh, him and his uh, ranger are there. All right, so I'm going to be moving quite quickly in this direction to follow up. Um, on that side, I'm also trying to listen out for any updates on the radio, which is also important. And I do hope that Cedric comes right with following up on tracks of that male leopard as well. Mr. Nkoma, I think, um, corner. Uh, you say, what a wonderful elephant sighting. It was, wasn't it? Just beautiful. And unexpected I thought we had seen the elephant that we would see today but all of a sudden the animals are out and about and it's wonderful to have such a busy drive and things all around us So you're just coming here to Treehouse House Dam, still following up here. We've got Impala's alarm calling in this area. So uh, I wasn't, just want to see what the alarm call is. Hopefully not the alarm calling for a Stenbok. Let's just double check down here. There or maybe a little bit further, further east. Sorry, this cable is pulling my hair. Right, come on, come on. Where are you, kitty catty? Kitty cat. And the moon parlor, yeah. Yes, okay. I'm just going to go on the dam one. I'm just going to stop there and just listen out a little bit again. Uh, no, Darcy Miller, I think Tortoise Pan has become a, a, like a, 
kind of like hot news to the wild earth and uh, he's doing so well and it's such a nice male such a relaxed male as well that was, that's what makes it as well so interesting just to sit with him he doesn't really mind us being around there all right let's gonna just sit here at the, the dam i'm gonna turn off and listen out a little bit to see if we can pick up on those impalas alarm calling again Unfortunately, last night it did rain, well actually this morning quite a bit, so any tracks from uh, last night have been, have been pretty much to, washed away. And uh, I know the one gentleman said he had Lalamba again, he had the Garimane Mulwati drainage line coming into Juma. So I thought maybe we could follow up on her, but as I said, all Did tracks. All tracks have been washed away. No, negative, just at Trials Dam. I'm just going to go quickly on Taxons. I'm going to shoot around on Taxons Road. Okay, I'm going to backtrack and go... Uh... Alright, we're going to go a little bit further back this way. Try and see, we're not sure we're not too far behind. Behind him. Yeah, I'll copy. Alright then. Uh, Anna Marie, no, that was uh, that was one of uh, the sightings of uh, of my career with uh, tortoise pan, that male leopard, and uh, more whitey, the other male leopard, together at a water kill. So yeah, I will never forget that day. We'll never ever forget that day. Carefully in this area. So we're on Taxons Road, maybe like. Maybe we're lucky to see your Tlalama coming up this side. I've been to some of these hyena dens uh, when it was not yesterday, the day before. Uh, is that anybody? Ah, so I thought they're calling me. And now all the hyena dens are, there's no, no activity. Come on, Paul, are we going to find this one? Are we going to find this one? <clears throat> I'll have to go back, uh, Philemon's cut line. I think Philemon's cut line, this other road that's this side, I think that's going to be our best bet for Tortoise Pan. Uh, uh, he hasn't crossed onto, onto Zoe's. Ah. He hasn't gone further west. Alan, oh, to spend time with these animals in person is it's wonderful. It's really breathtaking. I love it so much. Just to see them in person, see them right there in front of you. 
and um, you know knowing where they've come from you know their history and it's so important I think it's such a wonderful thing and uh, yeah it's, if you ever get to get a chance you need to come to South Africa come to these areas come and view the characters yeah and uh, it's always oh the Sun is hitting this uh, battle here like marvelous <laughs> it's beautiful though, Paul. It's really stunning. Looks like a male battalier. And look at that orange beak. Orange beak, orange legs. A nice, uh, I love those feathers on top of the head when it all kind of fans out a bit. And of course, this battle is enjoying the early morning sun that's coming through now. Lovely golden light warming itself up now. It's a beautiful bird of prey, this. And I love those wings. Oh, you want? Oh, well, you want there? Well, it is a Saturday morning, and uh, yes, uh, this is a live and interactive uh, show. So, we've got comments or questions that you want to send through to us on this uh, stunning, sun, uh, sunny Saturday, cat today morning. Please do so if you are watching on the Wild Earth website, wildearth.tv. On the questions page and then uh, I'll make sure that you do register so you can send those comments and questions through or well, if you just want to chat to us go on to our YouTube channel or just go on to hashtag wild earth on Twitter also known as X boy why are you looking at me funny <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's your favorite aviator. Yeah, they are pretty. They're beautiful. I love those wings that comes down and almost touching one another. The right wing and the left wing, those primary feathers. Right to the bottom. That's so beautiful. No, don't go away, sun. A little bit of cloud coming through again. And the need for birding, you always need nice sun. You need nice sunlight. Oh, uh, Cooksters, yes, and Paul. Well done, Paul. We yes. look great uh, close up there. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, thank yes. you. That's enough now. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, and Paul's uh, pulling out all the magic behind the camera this morning. Do you hear something? Yeah, sounds like Amy's got a bit of an issue with uh, Wendy. Looks like the key doesn't want to turn. Hmm. Maybe it's Jordan, just tell her to maybe push the key a little bit further in. It might have just popped out a little bit. <laughs> All right, I think she must have pulled the key out a little bit and that's why it doesn't turn then. But it seems like she's got that right now. So let's head over to Amy to see exactly what uh, has happened there. You know, Cedric, if you were here, I, we, we'll talk when I see you again. We'll talk. Um, no everyone, the key was just, it wasn't turning. So I had stopped the car just to catch up with another guide 
um, and get an update from him and then when I wanted to start the car again the key was stuck um, but I just shifted the steering wheel luckily it has happened to me before uh, so I did I did manage to uh, get it to come right um, but uh, thanks for the concern Cedric I really feel that you were worried about me and Wendy there um, anyway we are on our way again and <clears throat> just to give you a bit of an update on on the lioness it was indeed Chella and um, she was actually on <clears throat> one of our boundary roads well just off the boundary and um, she's headed down into the Moati again where she originally had the dead site where the cubs were first seen and so we've closed off that uh, sighting now and um, we'll maybe see if we want to follow up or do a afternoon perhaps tomorrow we just have to check what what would be the the sort of appropriate thing to do in a situation like that um apparently she did have a bit of a limp so uh, the update was that we're not sure if she was just maybe lying down for very long so she was a bit stiff um, or if there's something else going on so we'll have to follow up and see uh, exactly sort of also check if um, those cubs are still okay as well so that's sort of the update from that side we went to so now uh, he's moved off and gone down into the riverbed and um, but we will keep you updated with any other news do it when it comes to um, seeing these characters and leopards and and how much more so do you it carry So they've got uh, uh, the male leopard tracks coming up on Zoe's. So I did not do the northern side. It looks like I popped out there. And uh, so, yeah, they've got oh, hyena. Ooh, but why is the hyena there? All right, let's quickly look at this hyena. Hello. I hear crunching. Did you hear crunching there? I don't know. I thought I heard some. I thought I heard crunching. Why is it here? Sometimes you always have to take a look But why is Why is this hyena here? What is it doing? Oh, it's just resting Just resting, let's see what we have here yeah. Nice to see hyenas again Yo. Yeah, Daniel says so it's a little road bump. <laughs> it looks like a little road bump. So this hyena is just resting on the road, not really too phased about much at all at the moment. I'll see who it is. Which individual do we have here? Do we have Sherlock here? Can't see nicely from there. Fortunately, my monitor is not working this morning, so I have a bit of a black screen in front of me. Yeah. But. Thanks, Shreyas. You say Gangarika. 
Wonderful. Gangarika. The Gangarika means always busy. That's where she got the name from. Always busy in Shangan. So Yoshi was born in June 2020. So she's coming on to four years old. So she's not the oldest of females. Not at all. Only coming on to four years old. And her mother was a beautiful heart. And unfortunately we did not see the mom anymore. But she's got like a half sister called Mbilu that hangs around here as well. So it'll be nice to see, nice to see Mbilu again. We haven't seen Mbilu for quite some time. Hey, Gingarika. Oh, yeah, right this morning. We've got a full belly, eh? Nice uh, full belly this morning. Yes. Hmm? You got a full belly this morning. What are you sniffing out? lie in the puddle there. Oh, it's going to urinate in the puddle. Lovely. Add some extra water for that puddle. <laughs> Lovely. Urinating like a camel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Gangarika, was that not great? Did you enjoy that? Now, please don't go and lie in there. Please do not lie in there. Yeah, I'd rather move out there. You want to take your feet out there? So I'm just listening, they got it like some leopard tracks. No, 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 don't get in there. Oh, oh, oh no. No, don't lie there. Oh. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Oh, well, you know, that's uh, that's the wild, eh? You know, that's why, that's why it's called wild. It's wild. Uh. All right, looks like I'm going Greek. I'm moving away here slowly but surely. All right. <laughs> All right, that was nice. <clears throat> nice to see our Gangarika. Nice little bit of action there. Well, not like action, action, but it was uh, just nice and interesting. Using a puddle as a toilet. Uh, Clayton, Clayton. <clears throat> Any luck on your side there? Not yet. I'm having more now. 
trying to fill up on the tortoise pan so we're just going to quickly go into that area um, to the northwestern corner of Juma Catherine, most welcome. It was nice seeing the hyenas. I love seeing hyenas. And, uh, yeah, I just can't wait to see like a, a nice kill, like a, something substantial, like a big buffalo or a um, giraffe or something like that. And all of a sudden, you're going to like all the uh, clan members coming there, which would be very nice. Side in. No. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Jordan, if I don't listen to the radio, the guys for helping me follow up on this male leopard, and if they find something, I need to know as well. So that's why I'm on the radio as well and trying to concentrate on. Just trying to follow up on uh, tortoise band. Well, we're going to just try and follow up on this leopard and uh, get an opportunity to try and track him down. Let's head over to Amy. Uh, I know well, everyone, we have found some guinea fowl. And they are all actually quite still, but they are some chicks here, which is really special. And we're excited to be able to show you this little flock of them today. And with the rain overnight, now they are, um, I guess, drying off a little bit. We've seen some wing flapping and um, shaking of their bodies and um, they are like I say those little ones around as well their little ones look quite different from the adults you can see that the adults have these are the helmeted guinea fowl with that sort of red helmet on top of their head and there's sort of a bright blue um, on the face but the chicks don't have that coloration just yet they'll have to wait a little bit longer a few months or so until that sort of comes through Now, 
I'm not exactly sure how many chicks they are there. I saw one, two, three, four, at least five. But guinea fowls can have, I think the um, number of eggs is anywhere from two to 41 eggs that can be laid. I mean that. Imagine having 41 chicks, but obviously not all of them are surviving or necessarily um, being bred successfully. They are easy prey for a lot of things out here. But these few have actually made it past the first few months of life or weeks of life. And I love guinea fowl. I remember um, growing up and actually having um, at my aunt and uncle's house, they used to have a flock of guinea fowl that used to come onto the lawn. Their house was sort of opened down onto one of the rivers and we used to throw out seed for the guinea fowls to snack on. And they really eat a lot of sort of things under the ground, bulbs, roots, shoots, that sort of thing I do. There is a vehicle approaching, so we may get a little bit of sound of them coming past. And, uh, but as they go along, they actually can also eat some invertebrates, insects, things like that. And look at those colors on the face, everyone, wow. I love it. I think they are really underrated birds. What do you think, Panda? <laughs> Panda loves guinea fowls. He's so happy and he immediately said, oh, look, there's chicks. And now some of them are chasing each other around as well. And a guinea fowl feather is so beautiful, I must say. It's got these beautiful black, it, from this distance you can't actually see, it lo almost just looks like a plain brownie grey bird, but there we go, thanks Panda. You can actually see all those white spots on the feathers. Dust, you say they so fluffy aren't they just they actually do have a lot of feathers on them and it's an interesting shape as well but particularly now tea dust what's making them look quite fluffy is that of the cooler weather and the fact that it's been raining and they're actually fluffing out their feathers a little bit more than usual Dark Mayanava, you love the blue on their faces. That is such a gorgeous blue. It's sort of this, um, it's got a bit of iridescence to it, a little bit of a shine, I think. Um, maybe you can't see it now, but just because of the overcast weather, but when there is natural sunlight on there, it does sort of have a sheen to it.
can actually see that I'm picking like that constantly and that's what guinea fowl do that heads bopping back and forth up and down all the time the little chick there on its own is busy preening itself at the moment and you can see some of those spots starting to develop it's like half it's like you can see the brown and the black coming through in between the brown feathers of the chick is a bit of it's a bit mottled at the moment oh hello there's a second one's just popped out also very very fluffy and there's the third one as chicks they have very streaky heads um, but as they get older and are starting to lose their juvenile feathers they're starting to get more and more black and white like the adults Okay, a little bit of uh, not sad news but just news that uh, is not going to be too great and uh, as you can see we have got uh, male leopard tracks here very fresh on top of the rain from not too long ago and uh, another one here so yeah unfortunately looks like uh, tortoise pan came all the way up through Juma did his normal route and he went straight into a uh, property called Simbambili. So that is just to the west, just to the west of us. But oh well, it is just one of those things. And uh, you know, I think we might have just been behind him. I'm, I think he's just just inside of here now. Um, because we had rain what about an hour ago? About an hour, like a little bit of drizzle. This is on all. This is on top of all of the rain. So, but you can see nicely here now. Of course, you got these beautiful three little lobes at the back here. Now you can see how nice those three lobes come out. And then, of course, the four toes. No nail marks. And clearly, you can see the nails are retractable, so you don't see any of the nail marks outside here. And uh, beautiful print. It's actually one of the most prettiest prints around here. So I just heard Paul alarm calling, but that's inside Simobili, I'm sure, for him. So yeah, the leopard's got one of the most prettiest, prettiest uh, footprints and uh, we will call these uh, digitigrades. So they are pretty much uh, animals walking on their, uh, like on paws, like of course uh, hyena, dogs and cats and that, jackals and all that. They've got paws, that's digitigrade, walking on their digits. And then you're looking at us uh, human beings and uh, monkeys and that. <clears throat> we all plant grade. We plant our entire foot down. And then all the an animals with hooves and that, we call that angular grade. Angulates means animals walking on their nails. That's angulates. All right. So but this is digitigrade. All right. Bye-bye. It's gone. Let's continue with our, our safari. Where we got to go? That side. Yeah. All right. Let's go that side. Let's go that side. We're going to try and turn around from here. Oh, now it's cooling down again. It was nice and warm just now. I took my jacket off. Thinking that it's going to be a nice warm morning, and uh, all of a sudden it's uh, cooling down very quickly. Then let's go do the northern boundary. Maybe for maybe maybe Marips or maybe some uh, maybe the Telemati Pride will come down from there. Uh, go take a look.
So still very happy that uh, Chella, that female lion, and she's still got her cubs there, and I'm happy that they're all safe. And she's done well. She's really hidden them very well in that uh, spike thorn thickets there. So good, good on her. All right, we're going to slowly do the northern boundary of uh, Juma, see if we can pick up on maybe that uh, herd of buffaloes that might have been around in the area, see if they haven't crossed out, and yeah, I'll see what else. But while we do that, let's head over to Amy to see if uh, she's working the eastern boundary. Welcome back everyone. I hope you enjoyed a little bit of tracking with Cedric. It's always good to have a look and see the things that we're looking at when we talk about leopard tracks and following up and what it, and things like that. We are now at Twin Dance and just having a little scan around. I've got my binoculars out and these guinea fowl have also followed us <laughs> down towards the water's edge. So they're having a great time scratching around finding something to eat and there is also a hummercorp that is just at the water's edge now as well oh what have you got <laughs> it's just a piece of bark that's fallen off that um, branch, that dead branch. Hummercorps are just such fascinating birds, so unique in their shape. And it's so nice to see one like this here at the water. And that hammer cops, I'm sure, looking for something to eat. And they, most of their diet actually consists of frogs or tadpoles. Mindy, I believe you've asked a question, but Jordan, sorry, you just broke up there when you were saying it. If you could just say it again, please. Mindy, you want to know what preys on these birds. Um, when it comes to, to guinea fowl, there's quite a few things that would be able to take a guinea fowl. Um, any one of the eagles, I would say, this hammer corpse about to fly over my head. Um, some of falcons, they're such a, a, a I don't want to say an easy target, but just like Franklin's or spur fowls, uh, if we think about um, African hawk eagles or even Wahlberg's eagles, um, even a tawny eagle, um, you know, it's a, it's a, they are ground-dwelling bird that they're quite common. 
um, and there can be plenty of things that would prey on them from a bird of prey point of view then we could look at other something that preys on maybe some guinea fowl chicks would be something like um, a genet maybe um, that could try and prey on them um, even young lions and leopards um, often like to stalk spur fowls or guinea fowls or something like that and and sometimes the first kills that um, young lions are of guinea fowl or small ground dwelling birds in general Now it's always important to just make sure that you scan properly with binoculars. You never know what may be hiding away in the banks or on the shoreline that you don't expect to see. I was also just having a look at um, the guinea fowl chicks. There's a range of ages here. There's some actually quite small ones that look similar to a Natal spur fowl size, more on the right hand side. And then on the left, oh, they've flown. <laughs> Sorry, Panda. There's some bigger ones which are actually starting to grow their helmets. And that happens around the 40 day mark. So. We've got a, quite a variety, different clutches here from different females that were born at different times. Excuse me. Now, I just want to jump off here quickly. We've got uh, lots of lion tracks up and down here. Loads of lion tracks. And nothing coming this side, Paul. Oh, yeah. Ah, uh, these lions. Yeah. Ah, oh, lions went this way. No, from this morning. I want to double check here. Because there's only one track there, it's supposed to be more. Okay, there's more tracks here. Alright, we're gonna go get a little bit along this side just to double check. But it looks like uh lions have been quite quite active here this morning. Very active. Alright, let's go. Oh, might be for the Talamati Pride. Very possible. Very possible.
I don't see anything else, yeah. Nothing on your side, eh, Paul? I don't see anything that side. No. Alright. Well, I'm just going to go a little bit further down. I might actually just do a little bit of a loop because I might uh, try and see if we can find that, that herd of buffaloes. Maybe, 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 maybe those lions are busy following the herd of buffaloes. That, uh, the herd that Amy had last night. Chalet, favorite uh, tracks, signs and tracks to follow. Yes, it is. It's always nice. Line tracks, always so, so, so nice. Especially if it's like a pride of them that's moving through the area. And it's nice just to try and see if we can find them. Yeah. All right. There's something in my eye. Like a mucky that's flown into my right eye and I'm this little black dot there. Oh, no, that's old light tracks. Yeah, the car was turning up and down here, hey. Oh, I see somebody was turning around here. I saw something, yeah, I'm not too sure what. I don't see any tracks here. No, no, don't see any tracks here. All right, let's go. Oh, yeah, is tracks here. <coughs> I just saw tracks now. Oh, that's actually a. Sorry, I'm just going to jump out here. Hmm, this is beautiful female leopard. Female leopard tracks here. And yeah, uh, I didn't see anything further that side. Sorry, I'm just gonna. Sorry, Jordan, I'm just walking off a bit because I just want to see where did this female leopard go. Uh, looks like she's last track there, there. She went that way. All right, let's go that side. <coughs> Very nice female leopard tracks. So could either just by the size, oh, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe Tlalamba, or even could be Kara as well. Kara's been growing up quite a bit. The other day we saw Kara coming down the road here. <coughs> so it could be either of, either of them. We're gonna go do Rex and shortcut. You see this vehicle turned all over the show here. Yeah. This is this this vehicle and back and forth, back and forth here. Yeah.
Uh, Douglas, if you're looking at uh, the largest female leopard in it that comes on to Juma, I'll say it will be Shadulu. Actually, yeah, <coughs> hands down, Shadulu. Uh, Shadulu is a big female. Big female. So, yeah. I mean, she's one of the big, largest females I've seen. Let's go up here. Slowly along here, <clears throat> just take a look towards Galago shortcut. Now the sun wants to come out again, slowly but surely. Ah, the weather's strange this morning, very, very strange. You're calling. Standing by. Hey, yeah, yeah. I still haven't called it yet. I'm going to swap it here, but now I have to pump the car. And I just went to sleep. Alright, Kapi. I also picked up on Mufazi Ingwen Kwanzaa here on the northern side of Juma at the moment. Yeah, Galago shortcut. Uh, it looks like she might have turned south onto Juma, so I'm just gonna, I'm just busy following up here. It looks like someone saw her because there was more than corners that jig it there. Yeah. Yeah, he's just saying the other gentleman now that went on to see Mambeli or that was following up on a tortoise pan. He says he still can't find him that side. Yeah, they, that male leopard can move. You gotta, you gotta think like five steps of uh, steps ahead of him because uh, that's the only way you kind of can catch up to him because he moves far. But yeah, let's see if we can find this uh, leopard somewhere. Oh. I really have to try and see if we can pick up on this female. But she did cross in there. So I'm just going to go down here, go towards Galago Pan, try Galago Pan area. There, there, there was a hyena that was hanging around on the clearing there. So never know. Maybe maybe it's on our doorstep. Maybe she's lying right there. I laugh. Uh, I really do. Okay.
Thanks so much. Uh, but no visual from Chilakatla, eh? No, it doesn't Ay, ay, All right, thank you. Sounds like lumber has got a kill inside Torchwood, but just inside Torchwood from uh, Chilakatla. So it's just to the east of uh, Juma. And uh, yeah, no, it looks like that. Uh, that one is for base, so if that's the case, and that's far east, that is far east on the eastern boundary. If that's the case, and this one, yeah, so it's a, I mean, it's fresh, it's on top of the rain, so maybe this could be then uh, Kara. Very possible, very, very possible. But yeah, Kara doesn't come this uh, far south anymore. She used to, I've seen Kara once close to this, uh, like actually just north of our camp. You know, once there. Hello, everyone. It's good to have you back here with us. I'm really excited to catch up with you all i hope you've ha been having some fun with cedric um just to give you all an update of what we've been up to uh, we went to go check out past chiller's den site um full of tracks up and down we actually saw her tracks cross the riverbed um and go into a different thicket a little bit further in um no signs of her we didn't see her at all um but she's very much there and busy in the area so um in a few days time we can go and check again and see if we can see if those cubs are still okay but the fact that she's there that she's moving around she's still in the area means that i'm sure she is still um suckling and looking after those cubs i just saw her an elephant as well as right in front of us i don't know we can choose panda there's a big um maybe let's start we've seen quite a few eddies today let's start with the bark spider web that's across the road right in front of us i was going to drive panda into a into a spider web and what's caught my eye about it is how beautiful the raindrops are um particularly in this web there we go. Oh, beautiful. Have a look at that, everyone. Sure. Makes me think of the story of Charlotte's web with the sun glistening through the spider's web. Thanks Vivian, isn't it just gorgeous? It's beautiful and you can see that bark spider just right in the center there. And this would have been the web that it built last night and look how far, if we can just zoom out slightly Pandi, you can see how wide the anchor um, strands are. I mean that road is at least two meters from track to track and then it's still got to attach itself to the trees which are maybe maybe two and a half three meters apart it's amazing with the rain last night i don't know how sexy it was but um it's beautiful to see that
And these are the things out here in nature besides the bigger sort of um, more, I suppose, charismatic animals, let's put them that way, that it's also important to appreciate these smaller things. Sorry, Jordan, I did hear you try to say something there. If you could just say it again, I didn't copy you. Tiny diamonds or pearls on a string from Norm. Oh yes, absolutely. How beautiful is that? It is like diamonds or pearls. And it's just water. That's water droplets that are stuck on the sticky silk. You can see how much thicker that anchor wire is at the top everyone look how much there's sort of a very thick white line on the on the top and that's the the piece that's holding most of the weight and you can see the spiders spun that a lot thicker Now I did mention earlier that there are um, some elephants around us as well. I think what I'm going to do is try and just reposition the vehicle. I can hear this one munching away on uh, my right. Um, Ollie, you want to know what spider this is? Sorry if I didn't mention that, everyone. I do apologize. It is a bark spider. Um, I think because you've actually been seeing quite a few of them on drive that um, we maybe have discussed them quite a bit. So that's why I didn't mention it. But um, it is indeed a bark spider. In terms of age, Ollie, um, spiders usually live for, well, it varies from species to species, but in general, it's sort of a seasonal thing. So they'll be here, spin their webs. Um, the whole purpose is to mate and lay eggs. Um, and then they will uh, finish off that season and die off and, and let their babies, um, you know, the little baby spiders all come out and sort of continue. Um, and by the time winter comes, the spider's lifespan is over. All right, Panda, what do you say we try and see an elephant? It is, they are moving behind us, so I'm just going to actually turn the vehicle around and then we can see if we can show you these ellies that are around us.
They are actually all around us, but the sounds I heard were on the left now. <laughs> that is very thick. <laughs> oh, but we're gonna try. We're gonna try, everyone. We're gonna try. Okay, I see the back of one there. I'm just gonna go forward, see if we can get a better view. Otherwise, I will reverse. Oh, there's one moving. I can try quickly show you. Sorry, pandas. Do there we go? I wasn't making it up, everyone. They are elephants here. Yeah? All right, let's carry on. I think there's more just up ahead. <clears throat> Hopefully, they come into a clearing, and then we can show you the whole herd. Oh, there we go. And try that panda, that's a little bit more clearer. Oh, there's a little one. <laughs> the grass is still so long, everybody. Wow. I can't tell you how much one of the things, I mean, I love summer, but one of the things I do really appreciate about winter is when these grass is a little bit shorter. can actually hear some rumbling on the right hand side as well so I think there's quite a few more elephants than what we can see I know that those are disappearing now behind that silver cluster leaf tree so I'm gonna pull forward I think don't think there's any more coming from behind unfortunately but there may be more up ahead they really are on the move it's not even worth it I don't think <laughs> to have a look at those there um, we're gonna try find another view for you all oh I see some tusks there panda I don't know oh there are more here that's great maybe we'll get a, a chance to have a better look we've got a we've got a gap <laughs> So that's now on the opposite side of the road, everyone. So there definitely are quite a few Ellie's around. There is a bit of a fire break here. So I'm actually, I'm going to go forward. Sorry, Panda, I'm messing you around now. But um, now that I see there's a bit of a fire break here, let's see if we can, oh, there we go. I think this, this is going to be wonderful. Okay, so just give us a second. There's an elephant right in front of us behind this um, quarry. <laughs> so we are going to wait and see if these elephants will come out a little bit more for us. But in the meantime, you are going to go over to Cedric with a kudu. Thanks, Amy. Yeah, it's a beautiful uh, kudu bull that is enjoying some uh, nice leaves. Uh, the leaves all got like nice little droplets on them from the rain this morning. 
I'm getting a lot of moisture out of that. But isn't he beautiful? Look at those horns. Mm, stunning male, this. Uh, all by himself. Sometimes you'll find that there will be in like almost like bachelor hoods, but it seems like he is just uh, tra traveling on his lonesome. What's he doing? Ah. Uh, oh. Oh, okay. He's lying down. That's nice. Oh, there's a female next to him. You see them, Paul? There's a female next to him. There's a few. Okay. No wonder. Oh, maybe they're on a honeymoon. I just saw the movements now. So she's lying just to the left of him. And he's lying down. Yeah, that was quite interesting, eh? I really enjoyed that. That makes sense. You can just barely see your home, Paul. Can you see the camera? Not really. Yeah, yeah. You can just see ears. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, ears is fine. Yeah. Uh, it took um, Paul years to find her. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's that's the joke for the Saturday. Done. <laughs> well, it just shows you such a big antelope, and they can also just really blend in and uh, kind of just melt away in uh, in the thickets. Well, that's why they got those big ears a good sense of hearing so if any predators if they feel that there is something approaching them they can quickly stand up and uh, take a look Getting pestered by lots of flies. I think after the rain that we had this morning, and there's a little bit of sun coming through. Seems like it seems like it's bringing the, the flies in. Chris, yeah, they do got uh, stunning horns. Uh, Chris, they got lovely. Love those spiraled horns. Oh, absolutely stunning. Yeah, grey go away bird in the background there going go away, go away. <coughs> and these are one of our largest antelopes that we do get here in the Sabi sand. We've got at least a little ox becker there on the neck behind. No, you can't see it. Not really. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's two ox beckers now. Well, I'm just looking at him for and he's telling me exactly. What's he pointing at? Kudu. And you're pointing at the kudu. Yeah. That's a wonderful, Paul. Wonderful. Male. And he's beautiful, huh? Look at that big male there. Beautiful, big neck, thick neck, big body. And as I say, it's just a, a, not monogamous. They've got a harem, so I would think maybe there might be other females in that area.
Well, we found the elephants and we found a much better view as well. And everybody there is a tiny little baby behind this mummy here. I'm hoping that it comes out a little bit more. And you can just see how fluffy it is. Oh my word, I have never seen such a fluffy baby Ellie before. I think they're going to come right past us, Panda. Oh, this is wonderful. Oh, there's its little trunk. <laughs> Panda's so happy he's got the biggest smile on his face. Hello, little one. <laughs> and it is a little male male elephant you can see the little stick piece of grass in its mouth you're so clever with your piece of grass yes you are This little one is now going to come follow mom, so we're going to see it walk nicely out into the open. Mm. Hello! This is just adorable. I actually... I think they gave themselves a fright. <laughs> I wonder if the little one's going to try suckle at some point. I think I am going to reverse everyone because... Actually, no, I don't think so. Sorry, I just thought maybe, but we've actually got more elephants up ahead of us. So these are moving off to our right. But there are more coming. I see now they're heading heading off. There's actually a really large bull on our left hand side, but he's moving behind a torchwood tree. And we've got a challenger. Oh. I was wondering how brave this one is gonna be. <laughs> oh, you are very big and strong. Nancy, you say, oh, it's so cute. Yes, it was. That baby was adorable. And so is this uh, young one here coming to say hello to us. You can see that trunk sniffing. Trying to work us out. It's okay. You can say hello. Now he's moving off. He might give us one more look and a bit of a head shake. They often do that as they are moving away. Panda, they all coming across behind us. Oh, I'm sorry we can't show you everyone, but they are walking, all of them, all of those ones that came past earlier with the baby as well. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna reposition the vehicle and you can, oh, sorry, we've been stopped for a bit long. Um, hopefully turn around so you can see them again. Neil, you say this is one of your favorite species. Aren't they just beautiful? And this should give us a little bit better view of them. We can try here, yeah, panda, oh. And I think they're actually going to head up our boundaries just up ahead of us. So they're moving, going to move across the road and then head out of Juma. But it was lovely to spend that time with them.
And there's a big elephant bull there on the right. He's standing head and shoulders above all the others. And he's now associating with this herd. So this is what we were talking about earlier this morning with that young elephant bull. And he's hoping one day to become nice and mature like this big bull there on the right. And um, be able to follow elephants like he does, elephant herds like he does, so that he can eventually be able to to mate with them. And so I think that's why often we do find big bulls with um, sort of family herds of elephant. He's checking out if there's any females that he can mate with or anything like that. I think he's actually was having a drink there. I'm not sure there might have been a pool of water just on the other side of this bush. Looked like he was drinking. All right, well, as he walks away, I'm gonna reverse here. See, maybe we can see them again before they cross out of Juma. Mine, and the quarry tree behind us there. fresh elephant tracks in the road. All right, I think we're gonna get them crossing here, everyone. So just hang on for the bumps. All right, let's see. I know what happens. Distance is good, hey? Okay. You can see there's the bull on the right, that female with that little baby is on the left. There they go. Pangolins galore, you're so right. Often the babies don't know what to do with themselves and they look a little bit awkward when they're still not quite eating grass yet. They can't really do much with their time other than suckle and have some fun and sort of observe and learn. Oh, look at the little one running, Panda. Oh, oh, oh that was adorable. I think they're gonna come across the road. Hooray. This is, oh my word, look at that elephant, look at that big bull at the back, Panda, he's on his knees. <laughs> I don't know, doing some upward facing, upward facing dog or something, I'm not sure. Oh my word. That was hilarious. Okay, I think we're going to get some little ones coming now. This is just magical, everybody. Uh, 
Anna Marie, you say very cool. It is very, very cool and very, very cute. Oh my word. I honestly don't think I've seen a more fluffy elephant. Just look at the belly and the legs. I don't know if we can get it on the camera, Panda. No, it is a bit tricky. But there, you can see the fluff. It is really fluffy, like it's got a super fluffy belly and legs. This little male. And look at its little foot there resting. Oh man. And all of this behavior, everybody, is what they learn from observing their mom, their cousins, their aunties, um, even their granny. That's how they learn that behavior that they do themselves. And there it's interested in some grass again. Oh, he's saying thank you. Thanks, Darcy Miller. Panda is amazing and he does great camera work and he is doing such a good job. So thanks for um, saying that to him, Darcy. This is one of the most beautiful moments. I wish I could put you all on the back of my vehicle so that you could experience it with me. But there's such a, after rain, there's always such a beautiful feeling out in nature. It doesn't matter where you are, whether you're in the African bush or in a different part of the world. And now we've got these Ellie's all here and they're so calm and relaxed and it's just been a beautiful sighting. I'm going to pull forward slightly, Panda, just to see if we can get a different view. So we just uh, made our way to the northeastern corner of uh, Juma uh, at uh, Bifelzuk Dam. Currently just sitting here and enjoying that heron, nice grey heron. That is uh, balancing on a little kind of branch that's coming out of the water there. Piece of wood. Fantastic balance. I mean, that is one of those thin legs. Sit on top of that piece of wood like that. Amazing. And I don't think that heron is busy fishing at all. It's just resting there for now. Always nice to see them around here. Yeah. The crocodile was also here, but it's gone under. We just we just had like a brief uh, sighting of the crocodile, and it just went under and disappeared. I'll try and take a look if we can see it again a little bit later on. It's lovely at the dam. Dina, yeah, they are beautiful. Lauren's favorite bird, the grey heron, eh? Hey? She loves them to bits. But they are my, my beautiful. It's lovely just um, sometimes actually just sitting here with uh, with some of the birds here, yeah, and like the grey heron, for instance, and just watching them 
moving along in the water and with stealth and uh, trying to catch any any kind of uh, uh, sort of prey, uh, fish or frogs and that. And uh, it's actually quite nice just to view that sometimes. But as I say, for now, you can just clearly see that the heron is not even concentrated on concentrating on uh, anything that's swimming around the water surface. And then just to the right of the heron, inside on the bush there, is a pied kingfisher. Can you see it there, Paul? See the elephant bunnies? And just to the right there is a yellow. Oh. You got it? Yeah. Lovely pied kingfisher. That's it just waiting around, busy preening itself and getting ready for the morning. Oh, there, one just caught the fish. See, this one's flying towards us now. To that other one. Looks like it just caught a fish. Yeah, it's got a fish. You see it? Yeah. That is nice. And it's gone. Oh, oh they still got it. They still got the fish. You see that little silver thing in its beak? Yeah, it's still got the fish. Very small fish. Sometimes if it's too bigger, it's bigger than that, they will usually smack it against a piece of wood, try and stun the fish and then swallow it. But I think it was so small, I just took one gulp and it was gone. Oh, beautiful. I love the patterns on them. So it's just black and white, hence the name Pied. Pied means black and white in Latin. So Pied Kingfisher is black and white, but they've got stunning patterns on them and a lovely little crest right on top of their head there. And it's quite a long and sharp beak. Oh, it's actually three of them. Uh -huh. Sounds like a female that's on the low branch and then a male and a female that's pretty much up on a, on a buffalo thorn. That is nice. These two, two little hippos that's actually just staring at us. I don't know what they're doing. They are just staring at <laughs> these two are like, what are you guys doing? It looks like a female in front and I'm a young male at the back. And then see the female nice with that pink around the eye area and then the male much darker around the eye area. Just behind her. <laughs> they are just they are just staring at us. I think they're busy admiring and pause muscles. I might stop laughing now. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> just take it. <laughs> well, she's wide awake, and not the male at the back. He's half asleep. All right, so the town hall will be coming up very soon. Actually, tomorrow. Yeah, it's tomorrow evening. Tomorrow evening. So please join James and Andre Crawford Brunt at 7 p.m. Central African time uh, tomorrow night. Uh, they will discuss developments, results of the donation drives, 
and uh, the new vehicles, the Toyotas, and also announce our new travel arm. And that is the Wild Earth that Travel. They will also be talking, taking a lot of questions for tomorrow night. And this will be open to all the viewers, to everyone. And it's also available on all channels. And that'll be straight after the Sunset Safari. And our Sunset Safari tomorrow afternoon will also be extended for 30 minutes right up to 7 p.m. Just before the Town Hall begins. So yes, make sure that you do join us on that Town Hall update. All right, let's go. All right, you ready, Pop? Let's go. All righty then. Bye, hippos. Enjoy your time. Enjoy your day further. Bye. And the poor little um, three-banded plover. Their eggs are gone. Yeah. I went past here, and those eggs are gone. So I think. Something must have munched them. Sham. Hey. Uh, but I can imagine all the plovers and lapwings and ducklops. I'm sure a lot of those birds that nest on the ground. I think their success rate in, uh, in bringing up chicks and all that is very low. Very, very low. It's so prone to so many different kind of predators around here. Monitors and birds, snakes. Sophia, yes, I've done loads, thousands and thousands of bushwalks and it lodges. So I've done plenty of bushwalks. Always used to do it there after breakfast at most of the lodges. We usually start after breakfast. I walk the breakfast off and go and enjoy nature on foot. It's always nice. Tal Franklin uh, Spurfells on the road. Uh, don't go, don't go, don't go, don't go. Oh, got a fright. The other one's coming back out on the road again. And the Tal Spurfell. Oh, they are gone. Ready and pop. Let's move on. They have run off. Bye bye, birds. All right, let's carry on. Still here on the northern side of uh, Jumistal. Heading slowly west now back to camp area. I might actually just do all breeds. I've got a feeling just with that female uh, leopard tracks that we had this morning. Try all breeds again. Well, while we do that, let's head over to Amy. Hello, everyone. I was just checking out some tracks in the road, but they were hyena tracks. And we have left those Ellie's now. They crossed out of Juma and carried on with their day they are probably gonna head off carry on feeding uh, maybe have a rest a little bit of fun. 
it's a day where they don't have to really be rushing water. So probably a lot of eating that will carry them through the rest of the day. Speaking of, I am looking forward to having a breakfast just now. But what a magical sighting it was, everyone. Wow. I haven't had an elephant sighting like that in a long time. We're sort of in a nice open area. In the beginning, it actually wasn't that great. So, <coughs> sort of had a elephant in the thick bush on the right. I knew there was some more on the other side, so I took the vehicle, saw that there was a bit of a fire break, which was very uh, fortuitous in that moment, and then they just appeared, and they came out behind us, and then we were able to catch up with them again in the road. Oh, some very fresh hyena tracks here in the mud from this morning. It has been a full morning indeed. Panda and I were just saying how quickly the time has gone. Ooh, in the road, Panda, up ahead. We have spotted some dwarf mongooses. whole little family of them and they have probably they probably woke up about half an hour ago they um, warmed up they all around sort of the termite mound area where they would sleep and now that it's heat, heated up quite a bit I've taken off my jacket Panda's taken off his jacket they have they are ready to go out and start foraging you can see the one up on its hind legs there I love dwarf mongooses. They are adorable. And they'll be out all day today, moving from area to area, never too far. They sort of have a, a one kilometer squared area that they sort of stick around in. And they're looking for all sorts of little critters to munch away on from beetles, spiders, scorpions, centipedes, millipedes. They go for any of those sort of things. They had two playing there. <laughs> There's one digging at the back. what it's scratching for wow maybe something that's burrowed maybe antlion larvae or something like that Well, there's a few that, oh, and there's a squirrel that's come out. There's a few that actually have come a lot closer to us while we, um, <laughs> while we sit here. Oh, my word. There's another squirrel coming. Incoming. 
this is some interspecies conflict everyone what's going to happen what's going to happen when after all um, a mongoose is a predator <laughs> Those squirrels ran off very quickly. Quite a few of them have moved off, but there is... Oh, there we go. Hello. That's the thing with mongoose. They're never still for too long. Maybe only right in the early hours of the morning. Oh, those two are fighting again. Or playing again. <laughs> oh, man, that's hilarious. Now... I do know that mongooses can be quite aggressive now just because they're small doesn't mean that they don't have serious fights especially when it comes to you know they are led by an alpha pair that do all the breeding and other adults are sort of suppressed in that way and so you may have conflict arising if there's another uh, male or female that wants to sort of start breeding or or is wanting to take over the the business that's what we call a group of mongooses but sometimes then we'll have a pair split off because they um, are feeling too much pressure within the group of mongooses There's one there. The stall. Oh. Kathy Lee, you've asked an interesting question um, about do their young pair with an older one to learn like meerkats do. Now they in the, are in the same family um, according to sort of taxonomy and I haven't heard of that before with dwarf mongoose to, to be completely honest with you Kathy. Um, but it does make sense in some ways that the, the young ones do learn from the older ones, whether there's a specific pairing, um, uh, I don't know, but there may be sort of maybe the, 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 some, sub, some of the other adults other than the alpha pair, these two are still <laughs> going for each other, yeah. They do actually look like a little bit smaller, like younger ones just playing, so I don't think it's too serious. There's another another two that are grooming each other there I think or is it just one no there's two there's two um so Kathy that's interesting I'll have to actually check up on that I'll make a note and and check if there's anything with dwarf mongooses practicing that kind of behavior as well um similar to that of meerkats all right well we are going to I think carry on down this road now that those mongoose have gone off and uh, you are going to head over to Cedric. Thanks Ames. <clears throat> All right, uh, I'm slowly heading back to the camp area. We're going to go around there to the big clearing just south of our camp. 
Maybe see if we can get uh, a Gangari cab. The lovely hyena that we saw this morning. It's nice to see her. Lovely oh, to see her. Now I wonder if she's uh, Gangarika, has she had cubs? I don't think she's ever had cubs. Not as yet because I know she's coming on to four years old, but I don't think she's had cubs. Elephant activity once again here on uh, Juma, which is nice. It's always nice. It's never, it's never a bad thing. Can we hear something cracking? Sorry, my audio is cracking apparently. Let me just try and see if I can uncrack it. I do apologize for that. As well, Gangarika's mom, I mean, Hart. Oh, she was also such a lovely hyena, but uh, I think Hart was last seen. I think last, last time we saw Hart was about, I think it was last year, October, maybe even beforehand. Cracking. Hail to thee, blithe spirit. Bird thou never wert. That from heaven or near it Pourest thy full heart In profuse strains of unpremeditated art Higher still and higher From the earth thou springest Like a cloud of fire The blue deep thou wingest And singing still dost soar, and soaring ever singest. Ah, oh, welcome back everyone. Sorry about that. I believe something was wrong with the sound coming from Cedric. So you're with me until we get that all sorted. We are now making our way back up north in Juma. There's been lots of hyena tracks, I must say. Um, really, there's been a lot of activity happening, I think, when the rain stopped this morning from around 5 a.m. or so. So I think they have been moving and up and down and all over the show. And um, I believe you did see one earlier, which is fantastic. Um, so nice to see a hyena. I'm hoping still that I can find one. Would be nice to see a member of the Juma clan. Now it's so nice when you're out on drive to drive a road that hasn't been driven yet that day 
and you can see up ahead that there's no um, fresh vehicle tracks in the road which means that whatever walked here after the rains maybe even during the rains um, there are tracks I've seen Janet tracks mongoose tracks Ahina as I said there's some buffalo there buffalo tracks Well, there was one set of buffalo tracks that actually looked pretty recent. I know we had those um, buffalo sort of in that direction last night. Oh, there's some buffalo dung. Maybe they did come past here. They were sort of heading off in this direction last night. I was just saying that um, we have a few fresh signs of buffalo could very well be from those um, buffalo that we had last night in the clearings at the end of the show they were sort of heading down this direction from the plains up uh, near camp But what a wonderful day it's been, wow. I mean, if I think of yesterday morning, <laughs> Jordan was very uh, concerned about how quiet it was. And today I think she's smiling. It's been wonderful. And we've had um, a lot of incredible variety, I think, has been so lovely. Um, really nice to see starting off with a leopard oh my word hello amazing and then that elephant young elephant bull and then more elephants and then Cedric's tracking and then more elephants <laughs> so many um, then updating you on cello which is fantastic and then finding that next herd of elephants which was super special Tammy you say thank you so much for the epic sunrise safari it's an absolute pleasure I'm so glad that you enjoyed it I definitely enjoyed it I know Panda enjoyed it he's been smiling the whole time and I'm sure Cedric and Paul also had a fantastic morning I mean hello a leopard can't have a bad morning with some spots on cat today which is very very cool Just making sure that I'm checking under every tree, in every tree. Oh, Anna Marie, I'm so glad. I hope you and many others like you also enjoyed the safari very much. It was a wonderful day. It was a full day, lots of variety, different things happening, which was fantastic. Um, and hopefully this afternoon will be just as good if not better but as we always say out here it's just about being here it's just about being out and the animals and the sightings that's actually just a bonus because there are no guarantees and as Cedric would say you never know you never know hey Panda you never know <laughs> gonna take a loop around these clearings here everyone so far there's just been a few impalas but they were quite far there are two vultures circling but 
actually quite a few birds flying in the air there, but I don't know, Panda, if I'll do that to you. <laughs> oh, you know what are there? There's two beautiful Nyalas that are grazing here. We can finish the show with them, everyone. There we go. So lovely to see some animals out here on these plains again. It's been so quiet. I'm still hoping for zebra. Maybe that will be what I'll be searching for and hoping to bump into today, this afternoon, is some zebras. But from myself and the team, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. It has been wonderful, really. I've had a one fantastic morning and uh, we look forward to seeing you all again this afternoon. Thank you for all your questions and comments. We appreciate you all so much and it really does make the show that much better uh, when you talk to us and chat and enjoy the show with us and let us know about it. So we, we, we thank you all for that. Uh, we will be back this afternoon at 3 p.m. with On Safari and then straight after that 3.30 with your Sunset Safari with myself and Cedric. So please do make sure that you uh, come back this afternoon and join us. We are already looking forward to being back out here and see what the bush has to offer. Well, I wish you all a pleasant day ahead and we'll chat later.